Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Trailmaker's High Seas. And today we are going to be 100% collecting one of these areas at least. And I'm thinking about starting with the blue area because not only was it the first area that we started, but it also has the most amount left. Uh, so it might have the biggest opportunity to send us exploring some more. We only have 12 out of 35, less than half. Uh, so I thought that might be kind of fun. So I already have a fully functional sub, which I likely am probably actually going to use to pick these up. But I have a side quest here just for the sake of experimentation and trying some fresh new stuff. Uh, I want to try to create a manta ray using sails as wings to see if sails can actually help you underwater at all in, with like an ornithopter flapping motion. But before we get into that, uh, I want to wish you all a happy new year because it is now 2022. 2021 is over. I hope you guys enjoyed the compilation video that i just released yesterday and also i have another pretty huge announcement for me personally uh on the Caterinth channel which is my music project i am releasing a new track today about five hours after this video gets released and it will be a youtube premiere meaning there will be a live release where i will be participating in the chat as it releases so if you are there the moment that it releases that it's scheduled then uh i will be there listening to it with you and participating in the chat as well so i hope to see you guys there all right so let's get building let's get underwater here and let's see if we can build ourselves some type of flapping manta ray or something i don't know now there's no wind underwater surprisingly which is why we have to flap <laughs> hmm, so it seems like these two seats are identical as far as aerodynamics goes or hydrodynamics since we're underwater now but I'm just going to use this one. So the big thing with this is going to be creating the flapping motion here. Um, now, one thing, by the way, if the devs are watching this, uh, this mirror mode panel, lower the opacity on this thing. It is is way too visually obstructive as you're trying to see what's going on with your vehicle. That or leave some more open space in between these symbols. Just make them like 30% the size. So there's a lot more open space in between them. All right, so I'm kind of torn between using steering hinges or rotating servos to create the flapping motion. I'm going to try rotating servos to start out with. And we're going to see how this goes. There's two different motions that I'm going to be programming in here. There's going to be the, um, the up and down, which will essentially be this one but then I also kind of want to create like the appropriate angle of the fin or sail in this case as uh, it flaps up and down to create hopefully that forward momentum instead of just canceling it ourselves out all right so I've been teaching myself how to program something I've never tried to program in uh, trail makers before I've never actually programmed servos to be on a positive and negative loop because if I want both the positive and negative side to be activated by a single button, but like at separate times, I can't just use the servo itself and that was a new experience for me so I figured out how to route it through logic gates using these duration and pause settings so uh each of these has a duration of 0.5 and a pause of 0.5 which essentially means it cycles every half of half a second and this one starts a half a second later so now when I press space I get this action going on which I'm hoping is going to be what I need to create this flapping motion so now let's go ahead and attach a sail here. Let's see how big these things really are. That's that's actually pretty big. I might want it to be bigger though. All right, let's see how this feels. Oh my goodness. Oh, my, wow. Okay, there is potential here for some actual... <laughs> these seem to have an effect in the water. That is so interesting. Now I need to set the other programming and also I need to make this thing make sense uh, the re for the rest of the body. All right, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, it's it's not going well. It's, I mean, we're kind of like, look, it, it's not terrible, but this isn't exactly, my programming is not right. Turns out uh, programming ornithopters isn't isn't as straightforward as I thought it was going to be. I Maybe I, I need to make myself neutrally buoyant. I think that's what needs to happen right now. All right, so I've made some progress, but um, <laughs> the progress is kind of, backwards right now i i literally go backwards <laughs> i think it looks the animation looks more natural than what i had it before like this looks like what i intended it to look like but it doesn't seem like uh on the downstroke even though i'm kind of doing this it doesn't seem like water is being pushed back behind the sails like you wouldn't like it would happen with a fin 
Instead, it looks like the only thing that matters is the perpendicular force of the fins. So as you can see, uh, as the fins go up and down, they're more often angling towards the front as they flap up and down, which is actually pushing water towards the front. So I have an interesting idea here that I want to try. I want to try to move the rotation point to the middle of the fins instead like this. All right, hold on. I need to I need to spawn underwater somewhere. Okay, so now we're actually going forward. Granted, it's still kind of glitchy. Some weird things seem to be happen happening. But now the fins don't look right at all. But we're going forward. So it's like, what do you, what do you want? Do you want it to look right or do you want it to function right. Apparently I can't have both right now. So I'm gonna move them back to where it looks cooler and then I'm just going to cheat by adding some underwater propellers to this thing. I'm also realizing that these oars do not work at all as uh, rudders to help with my rotation. So I'm gonna have to use something else here. What about these? Will these work? Because these actually kind of look cool too. No, they also might just be too close to my center. Let's try an actual fin instead and see how this feels. Ah, see, that's kind of working now. But the, the rest of it isn't right now. All right, I think I got it now, but there is something really strange happening. Everything I've checked and double checked, everything is symmetrical. But as you can see, I constantly rotate in a circle which is very strange, even though nothing else is doing anything, why is it rotating in a circle like this? Like, we are completely symmetrical. When I go, I rotate in a circle to the right. I can't, I, I can't see anything that isn't symmetrical. And the fact that mirror mode is able to turn on usually means that it is symmetrical too, because if anything isn't symmetrical, here, I'll just add one extra piece over here, like that. Now I can't turn mirror mode on because the structure is not symmetrical. I've checked all the servo speeds. They're the same on both sides and they're both being controlled by the same logic gates. I've also checked that our underwater propellers are all controlled with the same controls. Whoa! Oh my goodness. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure you could definitely create... Like, look at that. Just based off of that right there, I'm pretty sure you could create a flying vehicle. Uh, with just sails alone, like an ornithopter flying vehicle with just sails alone. Um, so I, the only reason I was flying or swimming straight there was because I was counteracting it with the fins up in the front because these are how I do my roll. But if I don't counteract it, then this happens, which is very, very strange to me. All right, so in the time I had, this is the best thing that I could pull off. <laughs> it constantly wants to rotate to the right. It needs propellers to actually go anywhere. Uh, an underwater ornithopter is a little over my head right now. I need a lot more time to troubleshoot and experiment, but we have a mission here. As cool as this thing is to watch, it actually is pretty cool to watch though. Uh, as cool as this thing is to watch, um, let's get to actually collecting the salvage and seeing what happens when we, hundred, when we do 100% of one color. And I'm sorry, but for the sake of time, since that took way longer just to play around with the manta ray than I thought it was, and I'm actually running out of time, I'm gonna go to the green harbor one. We're gonna do the green ones first, because this, this actually has the least amount. I'm more than halfway done with these ones, so let's see if we can get all the rest of them. There's 10 left. Do I have them all marked? One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have everything but one marked on the map, so we should be able to do this. All right, one of them is actually over in this mushroom area. I haven't done a lot of exploring over in this mushroom area, but I think, yeah, one of them's on a mushroom over there. Man, this mushroom area is really, really wavy. Here, let me go. I'm going to take a sub underwater real quick while we're heading over there, just so I can see what it's like under here. This is really cool. Not a lot of sea life over in this area though, I don't think. Unless something big's about to come out of the depths at me. Oh, and it turns out this one's underwater anyway. So that works out. All right, we got that one. And now there is also, that looks like it is up. This one is also up. So let's just head back here and get these uh, vases. Oh, look at that, we got swordfish. This is my first time seeing swordfish, I think. Man, there's a lot of variety of the sea life under here. That's pretty cool. All right, where is this thing? This thing is... Is this above sea level? It says negative 11, so no, it should, shouldn't be above sea level. It should be below. Oh, there it is. I found it. All right, and yoink. Back up, please. Back up. There we go. 
All right, so how do I, how am I going to navigate this? Got to go around the outside and get this one. Negative 42, negative 57. Uh, I see this one. Do we know, by the way, do we know why? Who put these here? Who lost all this stuff? Why is this down here? All right, got that one. All right, we got another one over here. Oh man, that one is so far away. That one's gonna be a tough one to deal with, but let's get this one and bring that back. All right, I think I found this one. I can see the glow inside this cavern here. This one's gonna be an awkward one to get because I don't have the strafing ability. Um, How do I get my side in there? But I don't want to drop this stuff because that one will float all the way up to the surface. So I'm just going to try to get in here and then rotate and then turn my buoyancy down. And there we go. That's how you do it. All right, let's bring these ones back. All right, here is four out of that ten. Oh, <laughs> I jumped right up onto the land here. Uh, so that's 29 out of 35, so we got six left. Oh, I missed a vi- Oh, that one probably just got revealed. That's probably the last one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Dang it, I could have gotten another underwater one while I was here. All right, well, that's fine. Negative 80? Whoa! I should have got that one, too. That one's underwater, too. Negative 81 meters over here? All right, well, somewhere over here in the ocean. Way, way down. Negative 81 meters. There's a green one, like right here? What? There it is, wow. Man, they really hid these things. Imagine if they didn't show you on the map where they were until you actually saw it yourself. It would be impossible to find some of these. That would be like the most tedious scavenger hunt ever. So I'm actually gonna let go of this and let it float up to the ocean and I'm gonna go drone. And we're gonna fly around to pick up the other one that I think yeah, that is above water, and that one over here. So we're gonna get these three, and this one. And then we'll just have two vases left that are really, really far apart. All right, here we go, gonna be very- Oh man, the waves are gonna make this hard. Cause I don't want- if I- if my thrusters, if my gimbal jets get underwater, I'm gonna sink. But the water level is rising and lowering constantly. All right, come on, just get close enough to pick it up. There we go, all right, up, 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 up. All right, we're good. Now we go directly to the east. Oh, look at the whales underneath. That is so cool. And this is my first time seeing them from above the water. That's awesome. That is so awesome. All right, now we got Lonely Peak over here. It looks like it's probably on top of this thing. It's not on top. <laughs> this peak is so lonely. Even the artifact doesn't want to be on top of it. That is so sad. Why did they do that? They have this big peak and they gave it its own name and then they put an artifact next to it. Unless it fell. Maybe it actually fell? I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. Don't break. Don't break. Did I get it? Oh, I got it. I didn't even realize I got it. All right, now we got one more of these down at the Three Kings. Oh, and there's one over here. I can reveal this one at least. Get close enough so it shows up on my map and then I'll know where it is. Not revealed yet. Oh, no, I accidentally picked it up. Okay, well, we're taking this one with us. <laughs> All right, this one is at least on top of the peak of the Three Kings. On the middle king. The taller king. Is no one asking why there's uh, there's three kings in one area, though? Should it, shouldn't, they, shouldn't there be one king for each area? There we go. All right, let's bring these back to the green one. And if those are the three kings, who who's that? Who's that then, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> you hear the seagull laughing at me? Are you serious? This book is probably not gonna survive this. Uh... <sighs> Come on, book, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Nope, the book didn't survive. It teleported back there. But at least, hey, it's now, now it's on the map. Okay, so now we got this one, and way down here we got this one. So let's teleport over here and start with that because it's way farther away. So this is by the skull. This is I actually whales rest. This is I've wanted to explore this area more. So let's go southwest. All right. So there's the skull of Atuin. So the skeleton, the spine goes down in this direction, almost leading us towards this artifact. Wow, this goes really, really far. Is there more? There's more ribs up there. It's going a little bit deeper, too. I want to get to the end of the tail. It's getting really dark. Is this the end? Oh, there's a blue one right at the end. All right, well, we have that marked on the map now. 
But we are looking for green right now. Green should be somewhere over here. I wonder if it's like if it if it's in a special location. Oh look at that, another skeleton. Smaller, much smaller skeletons now. Somewhere over here. Oh, there it is. Oh wow, it's another big skull. And it's in this one. Okay. Alright, now we got a long Ooh. I'm gonna repair just in case. But now we got a long way back. Yeah, we got a long way back all the way over to that one. So we got to go north. Oh, man, is this creepy or what? When you can't, like, see anything around you. Oh, there's the, there's the surface, at least. There we go. All right, it took a few minutes, but the target has been located in another one of these little coral holes. And, oh, no, I brought it out, but it did not stick to the tractor beam. There we go. Okay, this is it. These are the last two, I'm pretty sure. I hope. I hope I didn't miscount. So now we got to work our way back in here. All right, let's check the numbers. 33 out of 35. All right, I did count correctly. Here we go, the last two. I unlocked the Viking trophy. It got kind of blocked by, uh, by the retrieval notification. All right, let's see, where's this Viking trophy? I wanna see this. Here it is. All right, so it looks like, oh yeah, it looks like you're gonna get a different trophy. I remember seeing these a couple episodes ago. You're gonna get a different trophy for unlocking each one of these. I wonder if something unlocks when you unlock all of the trophies, like a mega reward or something. So this is the Viking trophy for the Viking area. All right, so that's one of four areas complete. Next time, I am i don't know which area I'll be doing next. It'll depend on what else I end up doing in that episode two. My map is still a little bit splotchy. There's some stuff to discover, but if you have any uh, preferences, let me know down in the comments below. And I hope to see you guys later today on the Katarin's channel at um, 9 a.m. Pacific time. So I hope everyone had a happy new year. If you want to see some more awesome stuff on the channel, you can go ahead and check that out right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah.